Hello and welcome. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to look at the audit risk model and at the various components of the audit risk model. So let's review real quick. What is the audit risk model? Audit risk equal to the inherent risk times the control risk times the detection risk. Remember those inherent and control risk are called risk of material misstatement. So this is basically the audit risk model. Let's go ahead and take a look at those 10 situations and see which um, which of the risks do they most directly relate to? Okay, now sometimes a risk might, uh, an event might affect more than one risk, but what does it really affect to? Let's take a look at item number one. The client lacks sufficient working capital to continue operation. So, what is that going to do? That's related to our audit risk. That's related to our audit risk. If the, if the client is risky, our acceptable audit risk it goes up. Okay, now you are dealing with a risky client. So this is an audit risk client. Okay. Item two, the client fails to detect employee theft and inventory from the warehouse because there are no restrictions on the warehouse access and the client does not reconcile inventory on hand to record that amount on a timely basis. Well, what is this risk? This is a risk of control risk. There is no control. The company is not properly protecting their inventory. So this is a control risk. So this is a control risk and the control risk will go up. We have no control. And what's gonna happen if we have more control risk, we have to collect more evidence. The sample will go up because we need to compensate for that control. So we need to do more substantive testing, simply put. Item number three, the company is a publicly traded company. Well, if we're auditing a publicly traded company, our audit risk will go up we have more risk we have more risk why because the uh, the consequences are are dire and we have we are dealing with more outsiders such as shareholders regulators government agencies creditors so there are more people involved and when there are more people involved your audit risk will go up four the auditor has identified numerous material misstatements during the prior year engagement. So we're looking at the prior year engagement and the prior year and we found many risks. This is an example of inherent risk. Basically, the company is inherently risky. It's inherently risky. From the prior year, we already know there, are, there were mistakes in the system. Now you're saying there were mistakes. By this time, they should have updated them. Yes, maybe they, they did adjust the mistakes, but the point is that there, if there were mistakes the prior year, there's a good chance those mistakes are still here because companies don't change very quickly. So that's the assumption behind this, that the company is still inherently risky versus you are looking at a company with no mistakes from the prior year, so it's less inherently risky company. That's why it's an inherent risk. Five. The assigned staff on the audit engagement lack the necessary skills to identify actual errors in an account balance when examining audit evidence. So what's happening, we're sending, uh, we are sending uh, people that are not really qualified. So what's going to happen if they're not qualified, they are going to miss the misstatement. They are not going to find the misstatement. So what's going to happen is this is going to affect our detection risk. Number six, the client is one of the industry's largest base on its size and market share. This is similar to the company is publicly traded. We have more users. When we have more users, this is affecting the audit risk because if there's more users, more people are looking over your shoulder. Therefore, there's more risk. If something goes bad, um, you're, you're going to be in a bigger problem. So that's why you have a lot of audit risk there. Number seven, the client engages in several material transactions with entities owed by family member of several of the client's senior executives. So here we are involving an, an, uh, related party transactions. This is going to increase inherent risk. Once you have a related party transaction, the transaction becomes inherently risky because they may not be at arm length transaction. They might be just booking transaction just to uh, make the books looks better. So you have inherent risk. So you have to be simply a little bit more careful. And simply what you do with those interrelated party transaction, you just audit them 100% to be safe because they are inherently risky. Eight, the allowance for doubtful account is based on significant assumption made by management. Here, here we are making assumptions. And in every account where we have to make assumptions, estimation, judgment, what's going to happen, the account becomes inherently risky. Just it becomes risky. Because if you compare this to transactions where it's a clear cut cash, we paid rent cash, that's easy. We see the check is canceled. But when we are dealing with estimation 
and assumptions and judgment, the account becomes inherently risky because we have to judge those assumptions. We have to judge those estimations. We have to judge those estimates. And also we are using our judgment. So it's a judgment times another judgment. So that's why the account becomes inherently risky. It's going to increase the inherent risk. Nine, the audit programs emit several necessary audit procedures. That's not good. It means if you do so, what's going to happen is you might miss you might miss certain misstatement. It means your detection risk is affected here. It affects your detection risk. And number 10, the clients fail to reconcile accounts to record the cash balance. So that's a no-no. That's a control risk. Basically, the company is not properly uh, protecting their cash because bank reconciliation is a form of control risk. What does that mean? It means cash could be stolen, uh, hidden, anything missing lost without us knowing therefore the company is not implementing the proper control to to protect their cash so this is number 10 deals with control risk so hopefully after we look at these uh, uh, accounts we see what affects each of these components and hopefully you know the relationship between all of those if not view the related lecture if you have any questions any comments by all means email me or see me in class and if you're studying for your cpa exam Study hard. It's worth it.